for the first time in over a month, the Rams of Colorado State are back home to play in their brand new stadium. It'll be the first on-campus night game in 51 years here in Fort Collins. Fans fired up for this homecoming event. It's a showdown between Nevada and Colorado State under the lights in the Mountain West. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Fort Collins alongside my partner, former San Diego State All-American Kirk Morris, and I'm Clay Matvick. And Mike Bobo has this thing rolling here at Colorado State. Besides a new stadium, the Rams are going to be contenders for a conference title in the Mountain West. I think got it rolling Maybe an understatement. Look, the Colorado State Rams right now are trying to go 3-0 and in conference for the first time since 2002. They feel that this is the year they can garner some of the national attention. They got a senior quarterback in Nick Stevens, an All-American candidate wide receiver in Michael Gallup. They feel that this is the year that they can break out into the national scene. Nick Stevens, the fifth-year senior from California, two-time All-Mountain West. He runs this pro-style offense very well. And by pro-style, they huddle. <laughs> Make sure we can clarify that. They huddle up. They go out. They get a chance to scan the defense. But also, at the same time, they get into a nice little rhythm. Pro-style type of offenses, you're able to relax, get guys more involved. That's what I think Nick Stevens has learned to do here in his senior year. They're expecting a sellout here tonight. First on-campus homecoming game since 67. First on-campus night game since 66. It was really windy today here in Fort Collins. Thankfully, the wind has died down. It's a crisp, rocky mountain night, 41 degrees as we get underway. Nevada won the toss. They elected to defer, so we're going to see Colorado State with the football first, and they're going to start from the 25 as Dietrich Clark takes a knee in the end zone. We talked about Stevens. This is a very mature guy and very even-tempered. His wife, Haley, was his high school sweetheart. They got married a year and a half ago. She helps him study the game film, and she's really good at it. It's always good to have an extra set of eyes watch the film with you, see what you're not seeing, and she's definitely helping him out, especially with his play fakes. Don't forget about the dog, Bentley, too. Is that Bentley? Yeah, Bentley. Bentley. Bentley's the dog. I like Cute. Bentley. <laughs> we'll see what kind of night Stevens has at the controls of this Rams offense. Dalen Dawkins will start in the backfield. On the 25-yard line, a little razzle-dazzle right out of the gate. Dietrich Clark on the reverse. And it's not going to reap much. Maybe three, four yards for Clark, their fastest player. Nick Stevens has found his rhythm early the last two games, and the Rams have been able to jump out to early leads. Yeah, a lot of that has to do with the running game, though. Trying to stay as balanced as possible, creating run lanes has helped the play action for Stevens find some wide-open receivers down the field. Three receivers to the near side, throwing for the first time into the flat is Stevens. He's going to hit Michael Gallup. A guy to keep an eye on tonight. He's about a yard short of the first down as Damian Baber, the free safety, makes the tackle. Gallup, number two in the nation in receiving yards, 685 coming into the game. Yeah, but the one thing that I love about this offense is that right now they're ahead of the chains. Two plays, and in a third and short situation, this opens up the offense wide open for Stevens on third down. 54% on the year on third down. That's third best in the nation. They're going to pick it up here with Dawkins right up the middle. Gashes Nevada for a big run of 11 yards to the 45-yard line. You know, we were just talking about Nick Stevens and his wife, Haley. Haley helps him watch the film, and what she told him was that he's got to make sure he you know, carries out a play fake. That's what he does here. He hands it off, but you want to make sure the way you hand it off, the when you not hand it off, you want to make sure it looks the same. That time, I thought Nevada was fooled that they didn't know if he had the ball or not. Stevens wants to throw here on first down over the middle. Locks it downfield, and he finds Gallup. Gallup breaks the tackle. He's on his way to the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. 56 yards, and just like that, Stevens and company get this homecoming crowd on their feet.
Wyatt Bryan comes on for the extra point. This team back home for the first time in 35 days. And it's a great start on homecoming. It's the, it's the start that you wanted. It's your quarterback finding his best receiver. Go up and make a play. And then out race him to the end zone. Gallup galloping in for six. Senior Michael Gallup accounting for 61 yards receiving on that four play. 75 yard scoring drive. Stevens. 56 yards to Gallup, his third touchdown catch of the year to make it 7-0. Colorado State here early. And now Nevada is going to have it for the first time. It's a thing of beauty to watch this Colorado State offense when it's humming along, averaging over 500 yards per game. Now we'll see what Nevada can do as an answer. Ty Ganji at quarterback. He'll hand off to Kelton Moore, who's going to be... The mail carrier tonight for the Wolfpack is Jackson Kincaid, their top running back, didn't make the trip. He's out with a knee injury. They're coming off a really good offensive game last week, 566 yards against Hawaii. Yeah, that's probably their best game all year long. They feel like they've turned a corner now. They're understanding the offense under Jay Norvell. They didn't understand it before, but I think last week was a great start for them to kind of move forward for the rest of the season. And there's the first incompletion. It was tipped. Josh Watson, the middle linebacker, number 55, got a hand on it for the Rams. It's going to bring up third down and seven. Ganji started the first two games, struggled for Nevada, spent two games on the bench. Now he's back at starter for the third straight week. And like we said, coming off his best game, he accounted for five total touchdowns against Hawaii. Yeah, you're being a little kind there. He was benched for two games, and I think it took him those two games to really get back, understand the offense more, and they feel like Ganji gives them the best opportunity to win games. Ganji stays clean in the pocket, but is incomplete. But there's a penalty flag down. This might be pass interference against Colorado State. Pass interference. Defense, number 29. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. It was intended for Deion Henley and Sweet called for the pass interference. Yeah, I thought Sweet got in there just a little bit early. Ganji looked like he was going to escape the pocket and then decided to pull the trigger. That time, Sweet just had his eyes in the backfield looking at the quarterback. He just got there a little bit early with the hook of that left arm. It's Jay Norvell, 54 years old, first year head coach in Nevada. Got his first win last week. He has spent several decades as a NFL and college football assistant. Well, I'll tell you one thing he's learning now is patience because he expected so much of his offense and he's learned, okay, let me taper back expectations a bit, really get these guys in focus. They think they are there now. Ganji floats it deep and that was nearly picked off. Wyatt Demps, the intended receiver, but Jake Schlager, the strong safety in his 50th career game tonight, almost got a hand on that to intercept it. Yeah, the one thing that Nevada has to do today is they've got to find a way to get the big plays, but you can't force it because there's going to be a lot of double coverage to Dempsey's side. And if you're Ganji, you got to find the right matchup. Don't force it into Dempsey. Try to find the best matchup outside of what Colorado State is taking away. On second down and 10, play fake. Ganji down the sideline, and that was incomplete as well. Dan Henley, the intended receiver. And so far, Ganji has not looked comfortable. Well, he hasn't looked comfortable, but also the running game. I still think you need more of it. Last week, they had, did an outstanding job of running the football 268 yards. They need another performance like that to help him out, to get him more easy throws, to get those linebackers up toward the line of scrimmage to open up more windows. Ganji dancing. Throws it short, incomplete. Max McDonald, the weak side linebacker, was all over Kelton Moore. It's fourth down. Yeah, sometimes, Ganji, look, you, you want to throw it, but if there's nothing there, tuck it and get as many as you can and, and get up the field. And I think that's what Norvell is saying there. Just take what you can get. If the defense is going to give you a little bit, go take five yards and we'll go to the next down. Tough start to the season for Jay Norvell and the Wolfpack. 0-5, including a loss to FCS Idaho State. They're going to keep the offense on the field. Ganji's going to pooch punt. It's not a great one. And it's caught by Dimps at the 31. 
Just a 20 yard punt for Ganji. Colorado State already with a touchdown on the board will get it back. Ganji they can get a better punt than that one. Homecoming here in Fort Collins, Colorado this weekend. And the first night game in the new stadium, so there's been a lot of buildup. And the weather has turned out to be really nice. A crisp, rocky mountain evening. Coming into the night, 4-2, and 2-0 two, two and oh in the Mountain West. These guys are contenders in the Mountain Division. I think big-time contenders. And you could just feel the electricity in here when you walked in. Everybody's excited for this night game. And you could definitely feel these stands are <laughs> starting to get filled up. And they're still trying to get in here. Stevens pumps, throws to the outside, looking deep downfield. It's high and incomplete. Intended for B.C. Johnson. First incompletion for Stevens. That time Stevens just, just overthrew that one. He had him, definitely had him wide open, but you got to taper your throw down just a little bit. And that time, B.C. Johnson, he wants to get him involved. We've already seen Dietrich Clark already. We've seen Gallup. But B.C. Johnson, to me, is the big-time wide receiver that needs the ball early in this game to get the wide receivers going. Dalen Dawkins in the backfield. On second down at 10. Stevens will flare it out to Dalen. Dawkins! Big run! Down to the 32-yard line. Asani Rufus, the bandit safety, finally tracked down Dawkins, the Purdue transfer, in his third year in Fort Collins with a 38-yard catch and run. I love the run, but I love the block by Dietrich Clark, number eight. When you got wide receivers on the outside that can block, that created the lane for Dawkins, and he was able to find it and showing off the speed. But this is an offense where everybody gets involved. Your running backs, your wide receivers, everybody involved in the blocking schemes. We're at brand new CSU Stadium in Fort Collins, Colorado. Homecoming for the Rams of Colorado State hosting Nevada. It's the first on-campus night game at Colorado State in 51 years. And it's a good start for the Rams here tonight, leading 7 to nothing. And senior quarterback Nick Stevens has the Rams on the doorstep again. They're in the red zone. And this is Dalen Dawkins taking it inside the 10. This is a pretty offense to watch, Kirk Morrison. They average over 500 yards per game. Yeah, they average over 500 yards, but look at this. They're in the red zone right now. And last week, they were 5 of 5 in scoring opportunities. This Rams team, when they get in their red zone, they know how to score. And they're going for, they're going for six. He's Kirk Morrison, former San Diego State All-American. I'm Clay Mathic. Already a four-play, 75-yard scoring drive for the Rams. Michael Gallup, a 54-yard touchdown catch on the first series. Nevada had an ugly series on their first possession. To the end zone, Michael Gallup again. Got it, touchdown. What a start for the Stevens-Gallup combo. Fourth touchdown of the year. For Michael Gallup. Uh, just a terrific job by Nick Stevens realizing I've got one on one on the outside. I got my big time wide receiver on their cornerback. I throw it up to my guy. 50 50 ball. I feel like my guy will win that. Michael Gallup, holiday the second touchdown. And Wyatt Bryan comes on for the extra point to make it 14 to nothing. And we're barely over five minutes into this football game. Seven wins and bowl trips each of the last two years for Bobo. This is the best team, most experienced one he has had. Coming out of the end zone, Blake Wright for Nevada. And he won't make it to the 25. Nevada on third down this year, 82nd, 81st in the nation. 37%. Ninth play of the series, trying to pick it up. Nice catch. Good run. First down. That's Hamilton with the catch. And Nevada into plus territory for the first time. Yeah, Hamilton just leaks out of the backfield and no one accounted for him for Colorado State. They were so deep in their coverage. And when you got the back just leaking out and a terrific block 
by the wide receiver as well. We talked enough about why he dips earlier, but a terrific block that gave him some of those extra yards. And now you're in business across the 50 yard line. First and 10 from the 39. Back to the ground. And this is Russell Boos, true freshman out of Las Vegas, who we were told to put on our charts. Didn't know if he would actually play tonight, but again, that speaks to the shortage of running backs. Yeah, but see, this is where, when you have backs that haven't played, watch the exchange. He starts left and realizes, oh, I need to go right. So you're seeing some younger backs in, guys that have not played a ton. Now, now hey, you're forced to play now. The top running backs are out. And that time you saw almost a big miscommunication could have resulted in a, in a bad handoff. Ganji steps up. He's going to dump it off down the sideline. Incomplete. Might be pass interference. Intended for number 19, Wyatt Demps. Pass interference. Defense, number 17. Ball be placed to the spot of the foul. Automatic. First down. That's the second pass interference call against the Rams here in the first quarter. Yeah, and what happens is you get a quarterback that's getting out of the pocket. So you got to plaster the wide receiver. I mean, you just got to stick to him. He gets his head around. But I think it was the, the arm bar, the grabbing right before the face guarding. The officials call that every time. Blake Wright takes the handoff. And it's going to be a short gain. Emmanuel Jones. True freshman from north of Atlanta wraps him up in Nevada without Jackson Kincaid. Kelton Moore, we haven't seen him right. since he walked to the sideline. You talked about it. That was earlier on this series. So here's the second and nine, and they don't have their top running back. Yeah, you just, he just didn't have enough for me. Watching him during pregame and watching him limp the first couple plays, I felt they were going to go with younger backs in this game. So. What does that do for them in pass protection with the running backs? That's something I'm going to keep my eye on. Mannix goes in motion on second and nine. Ganji will flip it his way. Nice catch. McLean Mannix. First down. He's out inside the five-yard line. Terrific play call again by Mummy. We saw the screen pass earlier on third down. And this time, he just ran Mannix through the zone. He's the second man through. And they had Kevin Nutt Jr. on coverage. Right now, this is unfamiliar territory, I would say, for Colorado State. Nevada entering the red zone. Here Colorado State, only eight red zone opportunities teams have gone in. So Colorado State has not allowed a lot of red zone opportunities for offenses. Good penetration, and the Rams slammed the door on that play. Blake Wright took the handoff and then ran right into Darnell Thompson. <laughs> you talk about penetration. That's what Thompson, watch the get off. He gets off and gets up the field and finds a little ball carrier in the backfield. That's what get off does. I used to have a coach used to tell me, hey, you're a prisoner to the ball sets you free. That ball is snapped and you saw Thompson with a nice get off making an impact in the backfield. Marty English, the defensive coordinator, says Darnell Thompson has really taken to playing the defensive tackle spot. He was a defensive end last year. Be a short carry here for Wright. Josh Watson again in on the stop for Colorado State. Now you get into a third down situation here. Now it's what play do you call? And for me, if I'm mummy, I need to find out where number 19 is. I may need to put him inside the slot. Try to get a one on one for Wyatt Dimps. He's the big time playmaker. I mentioned seven catches a week ago. How do you get the one on one? He's down here at the bottom of the screen. I got to find a way to get him the ball in this situation. Ganji looking that way, throws to the end zone. Did he stay in? Yes, caught. Touchdown, Travian Armstrong in the back of the end zone. What a catch. And Nevada went four for four on third down on that series. Wow. Just eyeing it down. He saw it. That's a terrific throw by Ganji right where his guy can get it. Armstrong pulls it down. Spencer Pettit. The sophomore comes on for the extra point. And Nevada. With a 15-play, 77-yard scoring drive. 
to show some life in this football game after falling behind 14 to nothing. Yeah, you needed the answer, and Gadget gave it to you. Stared it down, he saw it. Go up and make a play, Mr. Armstrong. Homecoming weekend here in Fort Collins, Colorado. Those were fresh elk burgers on the grill. They didn't save me any, though. Where's mine? <laughs> Where's mine, Click? Something tells me this party's going to go on late into the night. We can find <laughs> some grub out in the parking lot after the contest. First night game on campus since 1966. I'm going to go back to the ground. Dalen Dawkins, good run up the middle. Number one running back for Colorado State. Planning for success brought to us by Northwestern Mutual. Well, if you're in Nevada, it's finding the red zone, which is what they did on the last series. They found a way to score a touchdown and defensively creating chaos versus this Colorado State offense. For Colorado State, offensively, hey, gallop into the end zone. Get Gallop the ball. He's already got two touchdowns and start that line more. Get some turnovers. Boy, Nevada defense. cannot stop the run. Dawkins, another big run up the middle to the 48-yard line. 17 yards on that pickup. Well, this is what Colorado State wants to do. They want to run the football. And with Dawkins, you got a running back that's very experienced. This is a redshirt senior. And watch the blocking up front. He reads it. He sees it. And that hole, I think me and you could have ran through that hole, Clay. That was a nice you hole. maybe. <laughs> He gets through there, but this is what they want to do. Ball control offense. Pro style here at Colorado State. Stevens away from center. He'll hand it off again. This time it's Dietrich Clark. On that end around. And he'll pick up a handful. Mike Bobo has this team four and two. They've gone to Bulls in his first two seasons, but they have eyes on a bigger prize this year. The Mountain West Championship. Yeah, and they feel like this is the team that can do it. It's not too often you get a red shirt senior at quarterback. That's what Dick Stevens is. They feel he's the guy this year. He understands the offense three years in it. Thinks he's going to be a big time performer. Stevens to the wide side of the field. Complete to Clark. First down. And more. And now the ball pops out. Asani Rufus coming up with it for Nevada. Colorado State with a turnover here late in the first quarter. And Jay Norvell's the team is fired up. Is a fumble recovered by the defense. First down, Nevada. And Asani Rufus on the recovery. Big turnover. This is what Nevada told us during the week. If we're going to have any chance to pull an upset here in Fort Collins tonight, we've got to create turnovers defensively. Yeah, th this is what they wanted to do last week. They had just a one interception, but they knew creating turnovers, getting the ball back to their offense, is how they're going to go in and get the big win in Colorado. On first down, Ganji flares it out to Kelton Moore. He's going to throw it. Man open. It's Mannix. He's going to go in for the touchdown. Trick play on first down after the turnover. The reception on the pass from Kelton Moore. We haven't seen a lot of tonight because we think he's a little nicked up, but what a pass. I think that's why he was in the game, because they probably practiced that play during the week, and they felt like that was the guy who could make that pass instead of putting it on someone else that hadn't practiced it all week. Spencer Pettit out of the hold of Quinton Conaway. And just like that, we're tied up as Nevada takes advantage of the turnover by the Rams. It's about playing the game within the game. Moore hasn't ran the ball well, but he's still got an arm. Finds Maddox. Touchdown, Wolfpack. McLean Maddox with his fifth touchdown of the year. Colorado State will get it back. This is Dietrich Clark. They're going to have good field position as he gets out close to the 40-yard line. A couple of touchdown drives for the Rams. They fumbled on their last possession. They'll run it here with Izzy Matthews, the big bruising junior tailback. They'll pick up a couple. Bring up second down and long. Here are the standings coming in to this game here tonight. You can see Colorado State on top of the mountain. Wyoming at 2-0. Oh. It's Colorado been a State. great year for San Diego State, your alma mater. Yeah, <laughs> great year for San Diego State so far, but 
Colorado State, they got to go through the gauntlet. It's Nevada here, but they still got Boise. They still got Wyoming, New Mexico. Dalen Dawkins is in the backfield to the left of Stevens. Maybe the last play of the quarter. Play fake. Michael Gallup gets loose, still on his feet. Another big play for Michael Gallup, the number two receiver in the country. Give him 29 more That's yards the the as quarter. the first quarter comes to an end. Timeout. Well, it's a fitting way to end the first 15 minutes because Michael Gallup had a big impact in the first quarter. Two touchdown catches. But Nevada answering back to tie this game up at 14. We head to the second. This got a really entertaining first quarter here in first Fort Collins. You're watching ESPN College Football presented by Geico as part of Dos Equis Tailgate Week. Michael Gallup, five catches, 117 yards and two touchdowns for Colorado State in that first quarter. Out of the other side, this is B.C. Johnson. Good run after the catch. He'll get nine on that play. You got to love the run, the RPO, the run pass option there. That was a run play that was called. But you got a senior quarterback in Stevens Reed, and he's got one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. He pulls that, doesn't hand it off. He gets the one-on-one, -on -one and... B.C. Johnson, I want to see him get more involved in this offense. I know Gallup has been the big play guy, but I think Johnson has those same type of capabilities, just like Gallup. Stevens will hand off to Izzy Matthews. He's got a first down, and he's close to the five-yard line. Matthews again inside the five. He's going to be stacked up at the three. Second down and goal coming up for the Rams. You know, you go from a 5'9", 185-pound back in Dawkins, Dalen Dawkins, and then all of a sudden they bring in Izzy Matthews at six foot, 220 pounds. You hand it off, and he just <laughs> falls on you. You know what I mean? He gets behind that offensive line and just moves forward. And this is what the pro-style offense does. It's, it's slow pace. They look to the sideline. They get the, the call, and they line up, and it's just really... Your senior quarterback, Stevens, finding, hey, what's the best play for us? They've given him a lot of a lot of looks at the line of scrimmage. Matthews again spins out of a tackle, and he'll get to the one. Nephi Sewell, strong safety, stepped up and kept him out of the end zone. Matthews very good in the red zone. That's where he's at his best because of his size. And now they're rushing touchdowns this year. They're bringing in the jumbo package. When I see three or four fullbacks and tight ends going to the game, this is big boy football. This is big boy football inside the five-yard line. Matthews, touchdown. Walking right in. On the ninth play of the drive, the Rams hit their third touchdown of the night. Michael Gallup, the receiver, great on that series. Matthews caps it off with this short touchdown run. Just watch the left side of the offensive line. I mean, they got everybody involved. You had Trey, Trey Moxley, you got Goldich, you got the fullbacks in. This big boy football inside the five-yard line, that's what Colorado State, that's what they are able to do. Touchdown. Bryant's extra point makes it 21 to 14 on a chilly night. In Fort Collins, the Rams' offense is red hot. Well, they're tailgating, all right. See, making me hungry. Look at that. <laughs> Some great chow outside of the new CSU Stadium here in Fort Collins. Got the strawberry, the chili. There you go, Felix. Got some apples for you right there, Clay. <laughs> yeah, just in case you want to eat healthy. Yeah, go get you some apples, man. <laughs> With all the other <laughs> options, I don't think so. There's Kelton Moore with the run. That's a good one on first down. Give him 11. Yeah, watching Kelton Moore come back in the game now. We saw him throw the touchdown pass, but he doesn't have that burst yet. But he still can run the ball, but you can look at him a little bit hobbled. We'll see how he gets the ball. He's in, he's in the open field. Now, if that's Kelton Moore a week yeah. ago, he's... 
He's definitely in the open field that time. He just gets what he can and kind of gets down. Yeah, he had 216 yards last week on the ground against Hawaii. And now he'll catch it here for a gain of about six on first down. But there is no doubt he is not 100 percent. Well, see, this is the, the dilemma that Nevada has, because now you've got a, a sophomore running back that has played a lot of football. But he, what he does in the passing game, though, out of the backfield in pass protection, do you want to put that on a back that hasn't done it yet all season? Or do you want to put it on the guy? Hey, I'll take a 60 percent, 70 percent more over some of the guys that haven't done it enough in a game yet. Well, they certainly trust him. Fake the handoff to him and they throw it. Caught by O'Leary Orange. The Canadian takes it inside the 40 yard line of Colorado State. And here comes the Nevada offense again. It's a gain of 20 for the pack. Oh, that time Jordan Fogel, the safety, watch number 11. He sees the run. He comes, he'll be on the left side of your screen. He comes all the way up and he creates that nice little open window for Ganji to get it to Dips. That's a terrific job by the play fake of sucking the safety up inside and creating a nice little window to throw. Ganji. Throws again. It's underthrown, intended for Blake Wright. And he got it. He made the catch for the first down. Wright with a great adjustment to come back for that ball and move the chains. Another back out of the backfield. This is where I think Nevada feels they have something. I think he's got both hands underneath it. The tip of the ball may be there, but I see control by Wright. Ganji now over 100 yards passing. Out to the flat. Catch made by Andrew Sellis. And that's another good pickup on first down as this Nevada offense has found some traction, Kirk. Uh, they've got the Colorado State defense on its heels. And if you're Matt Mummy, Jay Normal, you like this. They're in rhythm right now. It's whatever play you're calling, it's working. It's the running game. Now it's the passing game. You got backs out of the backfield. But this is where I feel like they've geared this offense around Ty Ganji. Looks very comfortable now. Kelt Moore in the backfield. Ganji wants to throw again on second down and short. It is Sellis, and he is buried at the 25-yard line by Justin Sweet. It's going to be a loss of four. And third down and eight coming up. Oh, you got to love corners. That's going to come up and tackle you. Watch 29, Justin Sweet, the redshirt senior, put his foot in the ground and come down and make a physical tackle. Wrap up. Celebrate with your teammates. That's physical play from your redshirt senior cornerback. Nevada four of five on third down. Here comes the crowd getting behind the Rams defense. Ganji outside to Mannix. And he has swarmed. Kevin Nutt leading the way in Colorado State. Will force a fourth down field goal attempt. Just a simple screen play on the outside that both receivers run up and Maddox kind of held back a little bit. And good job swarming to the football, Colorado State. Kevin Nutt making a tackle. Spencer Pettit hasn't made a field goal since week two for Nevada. The last two kicks have been blocked. There was a muffed hold last week, too. Fake. Quentin Conaway throws, caught at the 10. And down to the one-yard line, Nevada with a trick play. Reagan Roberson with the catch, and he takes it down to the one, a gain of 22, and Nevada will stay on the field. Uh -huh, this, you you got to make plays. You got to have calls. And this time, you just find a way to just keep holding the ball, keep holding it. He waited. Christian Solano, remember, he's the backup quarterback. We didn't even know if he was going to play. And this time, he pulls it. Remember, that's the backup quarterback. You always have to be aware of who's in the game holding the ball. Yep. They've had one trick play earlier, but this one now gets him into the red zone. First down and goal from the one. Moore sprinting to the outside, cuts it up. Into the end zone, touchdown Nevada. Jay Norvell, two trick plays tonight. Each time it's led to a touchdown. That's all heart. That's all want. That's all will to. You got an excited coach on the sideline. You talk about Kelton Moore. You talk about a guy, not 100%, but he's not going to come out this game. Gets to the outside. 
and just falls forward. I keep talking about his size, 5'10", 220. He cuts it back and just falls into the end zone. You talk about an answer, Nevada quiet in the crowd again. How about Nevada? Huge underdogs coming into Fort Collins tonight. More than three touchdown underdogs. But here late in the first half, we're tied up. It's all about the unknown. It's the backup quarterback, Solano, to the third string tight end, Roberson. And then Kelt Moore laying into the end zone. We're tied here at Fort Collins. So first down and 20, the senior quarterback rolling out to his right, looking downfield. Now comes back to the far sideline, and he has Gallup again. Another big play for Michael Gallup, his seventh catch. Given 30 yards on that one, they'll move the chains out to midfield. Now this guy's going to have over a 200-yard night. I've already sensed it. Look, this was a design throwback, meaning the action was all going to the right, and he cuts back, and he gets the one-on-one -on, -one on Crumby. And that's just a terrific route. That was going to him the entire way. Nice design by Colorado State. Sixth play of 20 yards or more for the Rams. After the 10-yard pickup, it's Izzy Matthews making the catch in the flat. And he'll turn it upfield for a three-yard pickup. And you mentioned it. Last year for a month, Stevens got benched. And he only got another chance after Colin Hill, who's now the backup this year, tore his ACL. And Stevens went four and two down the stretch. Led the Rams to a bowl game, and he never let that demotion get him down. No, not at all. And I think the one thing that I see now is his completion percentage. He completes the ball at a high percentage. Doesn't throw too many inaccurate passes, but you mentioned the talent that he has, especially in that wide receiving group, makes it pretty easy to play quarterback. He'll throw it down the sideline off the play fake. Gallup going up for it. What a catch by Michael Gallup. He is turning in an all-star kind of performance tonight. Give him 26 more yards. I said 200 yards he may get tonight. I may have to go up, make, give him 300 yards possibly. This is a guy that's just playing right now out of his mind. Now well, Dawkins, as they go back to the ground. Gallup had 212 yards on eight catches two weeks ago at Hawaii, and he's already got eight catches here tonight for 184 and two touchdowns. Just watch how he high points the football. That's, that's a tough thing to do. It's being able to not only go up, go get it, then have the presence to catch it, tuck it in, and maintain control. That's an NFL catch right there. That's an NFL type of catch. Gallup putting on a show tonight, showing all. We saw his route running. We saw the big play catch ability, and we've seen him break a couple tackles. This is the reason why, I said it before, Nick Stevens is so comfortable right now playing quarterback. Stevens, pressure, got it to the end zone. It is caught. Touchdown, but penalty flags down. The tight end, Dalton Fackrell, with the catch. Yeah, pass interference on the Vada. Eighth career touchdown pass for Nick Stevens. And you talk about laying it in there, putting the pass. Now we talk about quarterbacks throwing it in the bucket. He, he was going here the entire way. It was a two man game. It was the running back Matthews and Fackrell on the backside. He knew he had man to man coverage. Lays a strike. 28 21, Colorado State. Halftime here in Fort Collins. Let's go to Chris, Chip, and Jonathan. Halftime score 28-21. The Rams of Colorado State leading ESPN College Football presented by Geico, part of Dosecki's tailgate week. Alongside former San Diego State All-American Kirk Morris and I'm Clay Matvick. Nevada very much in this game as we get ready for the third quarter. Heavy underdogs coming into this homecoming game for the Rams on the road. And Nevada with the football to start the second half. Deion Henley to return. Gets across the 25 to the 26 yard line and there are penalty markers down. Clay and Kirk back upstairs. 
And this game started out the way we kind of expected a fast start for Colorado State in their first on campus homecoming game in 50 years. Got out to that 14 nothing lead with Michael Gallup's two touchdown catches. But a couple of trick plays have made this a very interesting night. Yeah, you mentioned first it's been the Michael Gallup show for Colorado State. Eight targets, eight catches, two touchdowns. I'm more impressed with his 115 yards after the catch. But Nevada, do they have any trick plays left? Or is all the magic gone? They mentioned those two trick plays. Can they find a way to score a touchdown without any trick plays? Isaiah Hamilton takes the handoff and he'll get two. The redshirt freshman out of Sacramento getting his first meaningful playing time this year here tonight. Nevada one and five overall, one and one in the Mountain West. Coming off that 35-21 win over Hawaii. We were curious to see how they would come out here tonight. They played pretty well on the road. Second down and eight. Ganji hands it off again, this time to Kelton Moore, who has been limited because of a tender ankle. That is his seventh carry. He'll pick up four yards. He does have a touchdown run from a yard out. You mentioned this was a huge drive, I think, for both teams. Look, you're in the shadows of your own end zone. You got to go 95 yards for a touchdown or even get in the field goal range. That's difficult on this Colorado State defense. They haven't played well enough, but yet I felt it's been the trick plays. Now with the tricks out of the bag already, the cat's out of the bag. Can Nevada drive on this Colorado State defense? Trying to convert on third down. Dumping it off short is Ganji to Kelton Moore. He's got the first down and Moore breaks a tackle at the 30 on a game leg. He's into plus territory inside the 20. What an effort by Kelton Moore. Playing hurt gets 70 after the catch. Playing hurt. That's just guts right here, and it's a terrific call by Money. Third down, they go to the screen, and there's nobody there. Look at the blocking up front. You got 77, 71, Nelson, Donnery. You got the guys up making plays, and it's 23, Kelton Moore. I mean, you talk about guts, you know he's not 100%. He's giving everything that he's got. And I can tell you, his teammates, they see it making a big play. Ganji from a clean pocket, throws to the near side. It's McLean Mannix. The true freshman gets Nevada to the six-yard line. Oh, Ganji delivers a strike here. He knew he had his receiver, Mannix, on a nice little corner route. And he delivered it on time. It was a strike. And this is where Ganji has come so far within this offense. Some people say, what happens when a quarterback gets benched? Well, this was for the good, I think, for Ganji. Sat down two games earlier in this year, has learned the offense, and he's been clicking today. 18 yards on that play as Kelton Moore comes back in. First down and goal. Ganji under pressure. He's in trouble. Being chased. Throws it to the corner of the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for Wyatt Demps. But it was well covered by Sean Johnson and company. Now that was a bad pass. Because he was in harm's way. Just throw that one out of bounds. Don't allow that ball in bounds. That could have been disastrous for Nevada. You live to go to the next down, but they've been successful down here in the red zone. Let's see what they dial up here on second down. Seven interceptions for Colorado State this year, second most in the Mountain West. Nearly had one there. Second down and goal. Low snap. Coming up, throwing is Ganji. Caught. Touchdown, Dayon Henley. Nevada, an extra point from tying this one up. It's a little cat and mouse game. Ganji, he, Ganji, he knows he's got one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. And he delivers it to Henley. He knew he had one-on-one. -on -one. Colorado State brought a little safety pressure. He waited just the perfect time. Nice little fake handoff. And it was a rhythm throw in a tight window. Terrific drive. 95-yard drive. Wow. That's how you answer right there. Pettit with the extra point, and it's 28 apiece. Kelton Moore, he's got a bad ankle, but he is playing through it. A 70-yard catch and run to set up the touchdown catch by the true freshman. 
Dayon Hamlin. 28 apiece. The college football Hall of Famers from these two institutions. Gregory J. Myers, safety at Colorado State. But Chris Alt, who you saw just moments ago, the former coach at Nevada. He is forever going to be the coaching standard <laughs> at Nevada. Jay Norvell in his first year trying to get this program turned around. He brought in 42 new players in July. He knew it was going to be a tough year probably at the start. And it was 0-5, but they've got things going now. They won last week, and they're playing well here tonight on the road. Dietrich Clark on the return, and it's a good one for the Rams. Stevens looking downfield, and he's just going to throw it away. It's going to bring up second down and long. Now, I think you're right. I, I think Nevada caught him a little off guard with the trick plays that kept the Wolfpack in this game earlier after falling behind 14 to nothing it looked like okay Colorado State's gonna run away with this thing but this whole stadium got shocked with the North Wolfpack pulled out of their bag of tricks that's what Bo coach Bobo talked about yesterday my coverage units I gotta watch my special teams and Nevada saw a special teams a little error got a touchdown earlier Stevens to the wide side of the field high throw B.C. Johnson can't come up with it. Is that a panda? That is a panda. <laughs> That's a panda. Th these fans tonight are passionate, but I think they're a little chilly, too. Temps yeah. in their 30s. Yeah. We found a panda, though, right now. <laughs> yeah. He's there. Third down at 15 for Nick Stevens, senior quarterback for Colorado State. Gallup here on the bottom. Watch this combination. Two receivers at the bottom. Stevens one for four passing here in the half. He's in trouble, gets away, and throws it incomplete. Threw it right at the feet of Dalen Dawkins to avoid the sack. It's fourth down. Boy, Stevens has had a clean pocket to work from most of the night, but Corey Rush had a great rush there. Yeah, I talked about it earlier in the game. How would Nevada create chaos? They created with a three-man rush. They didn't know who was coming. And then you got Malik Reed on one side coming and Rush coming up underneath, forcing the errant throw under duress. Stevens there. It hasn't been that way all night, but terrific rush there by Nevada. Second straight three and out. Another good punt, but it's going to roll into the end zone for Ryan Stonehouse. You see the passing yards tonight for Ty Ganji. He's going to go deep, taking a shot down the middle. He has Wyatt Demps. Demps, a race. Touchdown, Nevada. They've got the lead here in Fort Collins. What a night for the junior quarterback. And he hits his favorite target, Wyatt Demps. What a night, but what a throw. You talk about standing in there, knowing the rush, and knowing you're going to get hit. You got to think about that, people. You're standing in, in the pocket. You know you're about to get hit. He stands in and delivers a strike to Demps, who races in for a touchdown. You talk about some guys out there battling today. The that was a terrific throw. And he took a shot. On the seventh touchdown grab for Wyatt Demps this year. He's in the top ten in the country in TD receptions. And in front of a stunned homecoming crowd here in Fort Collins, Nevada. Has its first lead. Here's the quarterback standing in. He takes the shot. But Demps in stride, out racing everybody. The Wolfpack up by seven in Fort Collins. Wyatt Demps with a 65 yard touchdown reception. Third passing touchdown for Ty Ganji tonight, and Nevada. Leading for the first time here in Fort Collins off the penalty. Remember the penalty we just talked about on the kick I mean on the uh, the punt into the end zone unsportsmanlike unnecessary roughness lets them start on the 35 and Taking advantage of penalties Colorado State in the first half had four touchdown drives here in the second half three punts they flare it out Gallup his first catch of the second half, but it's gonna go for only a yard and a half. And you said it before, this guy's going to be key here. Yeah. 
as Corey Rush is slow to get up for Nevada. The defensive end. Timeout for an injured player. As they attend to Rush, give you a closer look at CSU Stadium, which has brought football back to campus for the first time in 50 years here in Fort Collins. Hughes Stadium, the old home since 1968. That's going to be torn down. You can see the facilities here at CSU Stadium. Absolutely terrific. As Mike Bobo says, a game changer. Capacity 41,000. It costs 220 million. Boy, they spent that money brilliantly because this is just a beautiful showcase, showpiece for CSU football now. I mean, you get new weight room, new locker room, and, you know, just being a player here and, and, and just talking with Vic Stevens, the quarterback, you mentioned Mike Bobo. There is now a sense of pride, and I think one of the players said it. They, I feel like this is our stadium. This Validates is, this is ours. the program. Absolutely. And this, they're going to make this a tough place to play in the Mountain West. Second down and nine, Izzy Matthews. Into the 35 yard line. So third down, big third down for Colorado State. Michael Gallup, nine catches for 185, two touchdowns. You start to get the third down, and he's my guy. I see one-on-one. -on -one. I'm taking that matchup. One-on-one -on -one with Vosha and Crumby, but Stevens looks the other way. Short pass to Izzy Matthews, well short of the first down. That was an excellent job by Richard King, 95. I'm sorry, Patrick Trudeau. That was a terrific job by him for Nevada. Seeing the play and not being fooled by the screen, just it was too slow developing. Good job, Nevada. Wyatt Bryan on to attempt a 51 yarder. There is swirling wind here tonight. Out of the hold of Nathan Lucas. Got it! Wyatt Bryan. He's only missed one field goal this year. That was last week at Utah State. And the wind affected that one. He has a terrific leg. Now 10 for 11 on the year. And that is his season long. That's a big confidence boost for the team. You needed points there. And now you've got the confidence that your kicker can make kicks like that. Still a ton of football left. But now narrows that deficit to four points now. Get another stop defensively like they did on the last drive. And Nevada with the football back. Dan Henley's return. Good one across the 30 to the 33 yard line. Kelton Moore <laughs> swallowed up at the 40 yard line. Josh Watson, the junior middle linebacker. That time, Marty English, defensive coordinator, called a little Saul Blitz. Saul Blitz is for the Sam and the outside linebacker to come and make a big play. That time, it was the middle linebacker. Watson came off the edge and make a big play in the backfield. You said it earlier, the defense for Colorado State might be the key to them winning a conference title this year or being in the conversation. After the five-yard loss, second down and 15. And Moore will get... About five back. Marty English, we talked to him yesterday. He was on Jim McElwain's staff, and Mike Bobo retained him. It's his second year as defensive coordinator. He is from this area. He was happy to stay in the area because family comes first. Right. It was so refreshing to hear Marty say that. He's a state of Colorado lifer. You know, he's been in the area even when he was coaching at Wyoming. It's still not too far from Fort Collins, but defense much improved from a year ago and you've seen him make some plays tonight third and ten deep shot O'Leary Orange makes the catch gets out of a tackle at the ten and sashays into the end zone another long touchdown pass by Ty Ganji 
55 yards to Orange. It's just Brendan O'Leary Orange. Ball's in the air. It's a 50-50 ball. He goes up and gets it. High points it. In 29, Justin Sweet, he's there. Redshirt senior, he's there. He's got to knock it down. He's got to make that play, but Ganji, some terrific deep balls he's thrown tonight. We saw it earlier to Demps, now that time to Orange. Huge play. Huge play. For Nevada. Seventh play of 20 yards or more for the Wolfpack. And it's now 42 to 31. Jay Norvell's underdog Wolfpack coming into Fort Collins tonight and playing really well. And Ganji with another long touchdown pass. You know, Coach English, defensive coordinator for Colorado State, he's got to figure something out because they're allowing receivers to get behind the safeties. That was just cover four. And eyes are in the backfield. Secondary eyes in the backfield. Not enough help. So I don't know if you go to a single high safety. Because right now, it's the post. Right through the middle of the field. And Coach Mummy and Norvell over on Nevada, they're taking full advantage of a wide open middle of the field. Safety's not getting enough depth. And they're just winning the 50-50 ball. Terrific job, Nevada's wide receivers. Ty Ganji was benched week three after completing just 47% of his passes in the first two games. He was 78% last week against Hawaii. Good numbers tonight. He now has 332 yards passing. 214 here in the second half, and he's got four touchdown passes. Dalen Dawkins on the return to the 18-yard line. The lead is 11 now for Nevada. They were more than three touchdown dogs coming into this game. Now Nick Stevens going back to work for Colorado State, and he finds Gallup along the sideline for a first down. He'll step out at the 36-yard line. Good run, Izzy Matthews on first down. This is a huge series for Colorado State which played extremely well offensively in the first half but here in the second half they've been a flat tire yeah but if I'm coach Bobo I just get my offense to the side and say fellas relax calm down still a ton of football left we're still in the third quarter we got a full you know quarter a couple minutes left just run our offense you see in the second half you know Colorado State hasn't been as explosive but you get a nice little drive here you score a touchdown you're right back in business so you don't get upset. You just say, let's fix it. Move on. Dawkins, big run. He could go. Dalen Dawkins, one man to beat, and he does it. 59-yard touchdown run right on cue. You say nothing's a lot of worth football panicking left. about just yet. <laughs> And Dalen Dawkins proves you're right as Colorado State is right back on the horse. They've made plays, but guess what? We can make plays too. And that's what Colorado State handed off to Dawkins. There's a reason why you have an opportunity with a redshirt senior running back. Give him the football. Let him go make plays. You still run your offense. No panic. Still a ton of football left, but that's how you answer a score from Nevada. That's how you score. Fourth touchdown run of the year for Dawkins. Now Henley on the return for Nevada. Good effort to get across the 25 to the 27. 457 yards of offense for the Wolfpack. Isaiah Hamilton will add to that total. Good run across the 30-yard line and dropped it to 34. So you had Colorado State score, and now it's, we're almost in a tennis match. It's like you score, I score. So now it's your serve, Nevada. And for you, it's the same thing that you have been doing. It's run here, run there, and try to find a matchup to get you a receiver down the middle of the field. On second and four, incomplete. Intended for Hamilton. He dives on it just in case it's a backward pass. Third down and four.
Big play coming up. You always know it's a big play because the fans sense it. Now the fans start to get a little loud here on this third down because they said it's a big play. And so the two guys who have made the big plays have been Wyatt Demps and Brennan O'Leary Orange. So for me, I'm making sure these safeties find those two, but a nice little bunch of formation, motion. Watch that motion up top. Stretch play, Kelton Moore in trouble, he's down. It's going to be a loss, fourth down, as the Colorado State defense, led by Jordan Fogle, the free safety, will force the punt. Fogle comes in to finish it off, but the play was made by number 15, Kill Robinson. He's the defensive in weak side linebacker, what do you want to call him in his 3-4 defense? He comes off the edge, and he keeps the running back in his sight. He didn't allow the running back to go anywhere. It was what they call a, a delayed draw. And just having patience and discipline, he gets there. And all you want to do is hold him up for a minute and let the cavalry come. Get you off the field on third down. A big play there for Colorado State defense. Quinton Conaway boots it away. And Johnson calls for the fair catch at the 26. So Colorado State, which has scored on its last two possessions, a field goal from 51 yards for Bryan and a Dawkins 59-yard touchdown run on the last series. 16 seconds to go in the third quarter. Nick Stevens to throw. Incomplete. Mike Gallup had a step on Voshan Crumby. Incomplete. Oh, you can look at his face. The face of Nick Stevens tells you he knew he had a touchdown. He knew he had a touchdown and just overshot him a little bit. Oh, he puts the hands on the head. He knows that's one of those throws that tonight he'll wake up in the middle of the night and said, I had him. You know, oh, I missed that one. You don't get too many of those opportunities. Back to Dalen Dawkins. It's going to bring up third down and manageable, but Stevens only had two incompletions in the first half. He's got six here the in the quarter. second half. Hasn't been as sharp for Colorado State since halftime, but they're down only four. We head to the fourth here in Fort Collins. Late night here in Fort Collins. Here we go to the fourth quarter. Nevada, more than three touchdown underdogs coming into the game, leading by four as we start the fourth. Nick Stevens and Colorado State have it at their own 31-yard line. Stevens had a great first half. The offense has been quieter in the second half. Dietrich Clark, though, gets to the 41-yard line, a gain of 10 and a first down. Since 2000, Nevada has won as a double-digit underdog six times. The biggest win, 2010, when they beat number three Boise State in Reno as 14-point underdogs. But if they can pull off a win here tonight in Jay Norvell's first year as head coach, it would be an historic win for this program, without a doubt. Yeah, it'd be a huge win just because it's a more of the belief of what he's been preaching. Watching last week's game and now watching this game. You see yeah. the intensity there on his face. He, he's all in. He's trying to build something. Yeah. And he's got a lot of young kids that are... Trying to work through some things. Matt Mummy's offense is a brand new scheme. The defense for Jeff Castile is a new scheme. There have been some growing pains. They started out 0-5 on the year, including a loss to an FCS school. Here's Gallup. Into plus territory, steps out at the 38-yard line. Make it the 37. Gallup up over 200 yards today. Your go-to guy. When, when you're a coach, this is the time you rely on your seniors. I've, I've always talked about it. Seniors in these moments, they've been here. They've done it before. And Stevens to Gallup, we've seen that combination a lot tonight. Stevens, time to throw. Looking for Gallup. Another great catch. My goodness. Down to the 16-yard line. First down, Colorado State. When you see third and 15, you know the first thing you got to do is protect. You protect first, and when that's all done, you look at the protection up front. A nice clean pocket on third and 15. Give him the time to allow the route to develop. 
And we've seen Gallup all game. Stevens again. Fackrell to the four-yard line. The tight end with a nice catch. After the 26-yard reception by Gallup, that's a 12-yard haul-in by Dalton Fackrell. Fackrell comes alive where? He comes alive in the red zone. So if I'm Nevada, I know I keep my eyes on Gallup, but remember the tight end, he comes alive, Fackrell, down here near the red zone. And he's had touchdown catches each of the last two games, but now this is a busted play, and Stevens retreats back inside the 20-yard line. That is going to be a loss of 18, second and goal. Now your all-conference candidate at center, Bennett, just a poor snap. And you forget about the snap. You're so excited to get off the ball. It's a run play, so you want to get off and get your guy and pancake him, move him back, get to the next level. But you got to remember the most important thing, get the snap first. And that was an unfortunate play for Colorado State, backing him up. Second and goal. Wide open man in the end zone. Caught. Touchdown Gallup. His third touchdown grab tonight. I've seen this play throughout college football a lot. It's the double seam. It's one guy going up to the post. And it's Gallup right up the seam. Up the seam Saturday. Nobody accounting for the guy that you got to make sure you put a hand on, but. Gallup is season high, but the extra point is no good. Wyatt Bryan misses the extra point, his second extra point miss of the year. We'll see if it comes back to haunt the Rams, but Michael Gallup, three touchdown catches now to put the Rams back in front. Well, Colorado State, after having to punt on their first three possessions of the second half, kicked a field goal and scored two touchdowns to regain the lead 44 to 42. I'm sure. Ganji's been good too, and he hits McLean Maddox in stride. A big play for the freshman out to midfield. And there's probably a marker be, down. Probably going to be pass interference, but they're going to decline that one. Pass interference. That. Defense, number 10. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a completed catch. First down. How good has Ty Ganji been, especially here in the second half? Well, he's telling everybody, don't forget about me. I know Nick Stevens is getting a lot of hype, but don't forget about me. He drops it in the bucket. I like saying that, man, because I've watched the quarterbacks. I always used to see him at practice. And I said, why are you always throwing in the bucket? We're trying to get the right trajectory. on Ty Ganji back in. He's stripped, and he's able to recover. It's going to be a big loss as he dives on it at the 46. Livingston Pagofi, number 92, the defensive tackle, popped Ganji to force that ball loose for a time. Yeah, watch the effort by Pagoda. You mentioned he's on the outside and like nice little rip underneath. And you just stick your hand out and you got the ball out. This is just a terrific job of getting underneath, first of all, dipping that shoulder and getting the ball out. That's a huge play. Backs Nevada all the way up to the 46. Now they got to figure out how do they get some of these yards back to get a manageable third down. Second and 18. Screenplay to Moore. Or Andrew Sellis, excuse me, the junior receiver. And he'll get a chunk of it back. They get a chunk of it back, but they almost get a first they down. They almost got the first down, yeah. First of all, it's a bad job by Kevin Nutt Jr., the corner he goes underneath to try to make a play coach used to always tell me if you go underneath you better make the play because if you don't it's 88 and out the gate and that one was almost a first down because nut jr went out inside should have to an outside isaiah hamilton it's gonna be very close looking at that i don't know that he got it i'm looking at the linesman official on the near side to us Looks to be just a little bit short so to me from my vantage point. Fourth down. I think and Jay Norvell wants to get a, wants him to measure it. I think they're going to give him a measure. They're going to give him his request. He, he was over there buying for it. He was pitching for it. Please give me a, give me a look. Give me a look. 
Now Ganji sneaks up under center, and he's going to get the first down. I'll tell you this. The officials didn't see it. I saw a little bit of movement. A little bit of movement by that Nevada offensive line. Just they a little got bit away of with They one. got away with it. I'll tell you this. I tell you, that's what the Colorado State coaches are down there pleading. That that offensive line, just a little bit of movement. I think the officials, they missed it. See that right there, that, that little bit of raise up by the center. Sean they missed Kreps. it. Kreps was the starting left guard this year, the starting center this year. Kelton Moore barrels ahead for about five yards on the first down run. This game getting long in the tooth. Seven and a half to go. Colorado State leading by just two because of the missed extra point by Wyatt Bryan on the last touchdown. And Bryan's a guy who had a 51-yard field goal earlier tonight. So he's got that in his pocket, but he's also got an extra point miss working against him. Tenth play of the series now for Nevada. Ganji keeps, gets out of a tackle. And he dives ahead. He probably could have stayed on his feet. And he fell down short of the first down. Lined to gain. It's going to be third and one. You know, one of the short tacklers for the Colorado State defense. We've called his name a bunch tonight. And Josh Watson, the middle linebacker, he makes Watson miss. You get one-on-one, -on -one, you got to bring the quarterback down. But now we get into another third and short situation. I keep the ball in Ganji's hands here. Kelton Moore in the backfield. Play clock winding down. They get it off. Moore hit at the line by Jordan Fogel, the free safety. It's going to depend on the spot. Looks to be just a bit short. Looking at that head linesman on the far side. Looks to be right in front. I think the line of the game looks like the 17. They're just inside of that. They're going to bring out the field goal unit, and it has been a rough year for this special team unit. Spencer Pettit hasn't hit a field goal since week two. They've faked one already tonight. This one is on the way, and it is no good. Off the upright. And Colorado State stays in front. Boy, have special teams been big tonight, Kirk. Yeah, Ben, don't break. Ben, don't break if you're the Colorado State defense. You let him down in there, but you got to convert it. The uprights haven't been too kind tonight. The new locker rooms here at new CSU Stadium. 36,765 in attendance here tonight. Nick Stevens, four touchdown passes as the Rams get it back after the missed 35-yard field goal attempt by Spencer Pettit of Nevada. It would have put him in front, but it went off the upright. And now a big burst for Dalen Dawkins. Into Nevada territory at the 47-yard line. Dawkins with a big run. I'm just going back to that last call by Jay Norvell and, and the Nevada. Wolfpack, you, you got to go for it in that situation because you don't want to give the ball back to Colorado State. They're at home, and now they're clicking. And you give it to your senior running back who now got it back across the 50-yard line. And you can just sense the momentum has now changed. It's now shifted to Colorado State. They feel a little bit more comfortable. And now... If I'm Colorado State, I'm taking a shot at the end zone with Gallup. He's out of the game, but you got to get him back in there with my big play receiver. They go back to Dawkins. And another big run to the 28-yard line. 17th carry for Dawkins tonight. That gains 19 yards. He's closing in on 200 yards rushing tonight for the Rams. What can you say about the seniors? I keep talking about it. it's the seniors. It's two guys that have been making plays. It's been Gallup, it's Dawkins. And now you get into a fourth quarter where you need to play a little game they call keep away. You keep the ball away 
from Nevada, but you get seven here. You want points. You get seven, score a touchdown here. You can put this game away if you're Colorado State. 384 passing, 215 rushing. It's been a balanced attack again tonight for Colorado State. Izzy Matthews gets a turn. Nice Ooh. spin move. Wow. Six foot, 220 pounds, but with moves like a ballet dancer, a gain of 13. See, that's not fair. That's unfair. It's unfair because you're 220 pounds and you're gearing up saying, okay, I got to bring my hat and my feet. And all of a sudden, he gets in the spin cycle on you. <laughs> you're like, man, <laughs> I'm thinking you're going to run me over. And these spins, that just shows you some of the athleticism that they have and at running back. And you got to change a pace back. But your change of pace back is 220 pounds. That's, yeah, he's that's not, not supposed to be able to do that. <laughs> That's more of that's a lightning ram, a battering ram coming at you. They go back to him again. And they're snapping with one on the play clock. Very smart to use as much time as they possibly can. Like you said, playing keep away now, leading by two with three and a half minutes to go. You're already in field goal range, so you know you've got points. You know, you got a three, but you want seven. You, you want to get the touchdown because a field goal here Make makes it a two them, possession game. Yeah, field goal here still gives them the opportunity to score and win the game on a touchdown. So you've got that, but you want to score a touchdown, like you mentioned, gives them a two possession game. But I keep this ball on the ground the way my offensive line has been blocking on this drive. I keep giving it to my backs. Deep handoff to Izzy Matthews. Bring up third down and seven. Nevada has one timeout remaining. Colorado State has all of its timeouts. They want that clock to run now. They're trying to get out of this night. 3-0 and in the Mountain West. Nevada giving them all they can handle tonight. Yeah, you're in a passing situation here. Dawkins in at running back. Only two guys touch the ball here, either Dawkins or Gallup. Gallup right here in the slot at the bottom. Those are two guys I trust with the ball on third down. They can pick up the first down at the five. Stevens pumps, throws toward the end zone. Ola B.C. Johnson can't come up with it. Fourth down. And the field goal unit will come out. He liked the matchup. He should have had it. He, he liked the matchup, though. And Johnson, he was there. Yeah, he's got to make that yeah. catch. That's right through his wickets, man. You got to grab that one. So now Wyatt Bryant, who missed that extra point earlier, but also has a 51-yard field goal tonight, sets up from 30. On the way. No good. So Wyatt Bryan, who has been very good throughout the year, has had a bit of a rough night, save that 51-yarder. It stays a two-point game with 2.13 on the clock, and Nevada has a timeout at its disposal. Wow. Here we go. Two minutes left, 2.13 on the clock. Big drive ready to start here for Nevada. Down two with 2.13 to play. Ty Ganji has had a great night at quarterback for the Wolfpack, and he hits McLean Mannix, the true freshman receiver. His seventh catch tonight. Now you're in another situation. You got one timeout, clock running. You want to start off with a good play to get the offense in rhythm. Now you got a huge play. Still plenty of time. Don't rush. You don't have to rush here, and I think that's what Gadji's telling his guys. We got one timeout. We don't have to rush. After the 21-yard gain from the 41, another pass and catch. O'Leary Orange hauls it in. They're deep in Colorado State territory now to the 34-yard line. That's a gain of 25. Yeah, this isn't your normal two-minute drill now because you're already inside the 40, inside the 35-yard line, actually. So no rush here. You can still run the ball if you need to. So they've got everything open in their playbook right now with this much time left. And they do run it, but Kelton Moore 
Can't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Just R.J. Gene, the defensive end, wraps him up. Darnell Thompson also in on the stop. This is why it's a two-point game on the Colorado State touchdown earlier in the quarter. A miss by Wyatt Bryan, who just moments ago missed a field goal attempt, too, from 30 yards out. This lands incomplete, intended for Andrew Sellis. And now it's third down. Jamal Hicks, good coverage. Now it's decision time here. Do you go for the whole thing, meaning that do you go for the first down, or do you just get in a comfortable position to kick a field goal? Here's Matt Mummy, his offense has put up 520 yards tonight. Huge play. Ganji looks right, comes back underneath, incomplete. He was trying to hit his check down receiver, Kelton Moore, and now it's fourth down, and this is the ball game. Yeah, it was a, actually a screen. It looked like a check down, but it was because Max McDonald, 31. I think they're going to use that last time out. Yeah, one time out left, fourth down. So you need a first down here. So you need a route that's going to get you out past the, the sticks. I'm going to look for O'Leary and Dimps. Ganji on fourth down is hit. It's going to land incomplete. And Colorado State is going to take over on downs. Josh Watson came in and made a huge play for the Rams defense. I mentioned his name a lot tonight. The heart and soul of his defense, 55, Josh Watson. And he just, he's the blitzer coming off the edge. And no one accounts for him. No one accounts, just, that's just will and want to. They got to him late. And it was a little what they call a, a smash seven route combination. It was Dimps on the outside. He ran the stop but just not enough time to complete the pass for Ganji. Terrific job by Nick Stevens. And we can't say enough about Michael Gallup tonight. Colorado State has big games ahead at Wyoming. Here against Boise, those games could decide the Mountain Division. They'll be at New Mexico next week on ESPN2, but it didn't come easy for Mike Bobo's Colorado State Rams tonight. But you need games like this. You need games like this if you're Colorado State. I learned a lot about this football team tonight because it wasn't their best game. They had penalties. They had mistakes in the kicking game, missed extra point, missed field goals. But at the end of the day, they found a way to win, and it was the defense that found a way to make that last play. Stevens, 384 yards passing, four touchdowns. Gallup caught three of them. 44-42 the final. For Kirk, I'm Clay. We now send you to Adnan for college football final.